Well, we are on location at the Property Finance Roadshows in Reading and I've bumped into a PT member. It's Andrew Southwood. And Andrew, um, very important really for landlords to take uh, advantage of a free event such as this, isn't it? What, a, what have you taken away from today? Uh, I think I've learned quite a lot in terms of different types of finance that are available. Uh, definitely not a cookie cutter one size fits all. Every single lender has their own way of doing things uh, and trying to find how you fit your sweet spots into their sweet spots to try to get the best deals available has been very helpful and obviously these are always good networking events. Indeed, as we're proving right here. Um, I think it's quite interesting speaking for myself as a landlord who just does single occupancy buy to let and holidays. I think sometimes landlords reach a plateau and then we get sort of stuck in our, our everyday world and it's quite hard to jump up to the next level. Do you agree with that? I would agree with that, yeah. I think it's I think it's very difficult. Uh, I keep saying to people that property is 80% psychology um, and we all find that different areas of our lives you get stuck in and property is no different mm -hmm. because uh, the way we are and how we how we live emotionally mm -hmm. has a huge impact on what we do and that includes property. So yes, actually jumping out of comfort zones is quite difficult. There's a wonderful saying which I always subscribe to and that is the comfort zone is a wonderful place but nothing ever grows there. <laughs> so we do have to make the effort to kind of expand our horizons a yeah. little bit, don't we? Yeah. Now, um, tell us a little bit about your personal property journey and where you're at. Uh, so I've been a property owner all of my adult life, yep. but that's obviously mainly residential that I've lived in. Yep. Um, but for the last 25 years, I've always looked at um, buying rubbish houses on good streets rebuilding them and then flipping them after three or four years and that's what's made us most of our money in property uh, and have been the best investment decisions I've ever made in my life and I'm a banker and an investor and so I know that market and I've done it. It's, it's still the best investment I've ever made in my life. Uh, in terms of property investing, I've been what would be described as a professional investor for the last three years um, and again psychology meant that I had to start very easily because I got stuck on places to invest and distance from my home um, so uh, we've got a passive investment strategy that is new build buy to let that's the pension they have we have virtually no involvement mm -hmm. in them and that's uh, london and the southeast uh, that's london and the southeast yep uh, and then uh, we have an active strategy that is around um, buy refurb resell or rent uh, or refinance um, where we are uh, my wife's expertise is in design my expertise is in legal and financial so we put those together and we do unusual things like buying old people's properties with very short leases left on them okay. and being able to refurb those and then rent them out and sell them on. Oh, very interesting now you've been in property actually a, lot, a considerable length of time there must have been so many changes not least of all what we've heard in the past week or so yeah. Um, has that changed your view on how to move yourself forward? Uh, I think you've got to be constantly looking at what's happening in the market and deciding how you want that to affect what you do. Um, but I do think I, I, a lot of the changes I would actually agree with, certainly from a regulatory point of view, simply because we should be a professional industry mm -hmm. um, and therefore everybody who is looking after their customers, their tenants, should be operating on a professional basis. And if any of those uh, new regulations come in that assist that market, assist us to do that better, it's got to be a good thing. Well, I, I do agree. I do agree. I just wish there was more enforcement of the ex existing legislation as well um, yes. before bringing new stuff in. But we'll find <laughs> out more because the devil is always in the detail, of course. I mean, just, um, you know, for, we have a lot of people on Property Tribes, as you know, who are just starting out. Yep. They're just dipping their toe in the water. Yep. If you were in that position now, yep. would you do things differently to what you've already done or would you stick to the same kind of fundamental ideas? Uh, I think I'd stick to the same fundamental ideas because I think the fundamental ideas work. So the idea that you actually understand yourself so that whatever investment strategy you choose actually fits with who you are. Um, I think that's a really important one. Um, start slow, um, start where you feel comfortable, um, jump some hurdles uh, and move forward at a pace that's comfortable for you. I think there will always be opportunities in this market as there have been for the last 30 or 40 years. They will continue to be, but there'll be different ones to the ones we've had or the ones that are available at the moment.
I so appreciate the fact that you've mentioned the psychological aspects of becoming involved in property because it's not a case of one size fits all, it's not a prescriptive remedy for everybody and um, speaking from my own experience and no doubt yours as well, there's a lot of stress can be involved and you have to be able to handle stress and to multitask and to solve problems. Yeah and I think that's probably why the vast majority of property investors stay fairly small yeah. because it sits either just at the edge or just outside their comfort zones, uh, the number of people that actually get beyond 10 or 20 properties is a tiny percentage. Uh, I think it's also why a lot of people go to training events, learn, educate themselves and then do nothing for the same reason. Valid point, valid point. So I'm going to put you on the spot here actually. If you could distill 25 years of property experience down into one top tip for the Property Tribes community. Oh gosh. Um, or is, can you, is one too, too, you probably need 20, but you know, what would be your sort of main tip to, to people watching this video today? I think my main one would be that it's always possible. There are always ways that you can do what you want to do, be it starting with no money, be it starting from a difficult situation, be it, be it starting as a non-homeowner. There are always ways that you can do something. It's about thinking outside the box. Love it, love it, love it. Now, Andrew is a member of Property Tribes, and if you've got, if anybody's been. Uh, inspired by what he said or wants to dig deeper into his thought processes because I think you've got so much experience and knowledge to share um, you can ask Andrew a question and you'll be happy to answer them. More than you? happy, more than Aww. happy. It's so lovely to speak to you and meet you, you and uh, yes we've been at the Property Finance Roadshow in Reading and there are free events all over the country like this where you can come and meet uh, experts and meet fellow landlords and PT members as well like Andrew.